Hello folks, my name is Tony Coe and a very warm welcome to you. This is part three of our Narrowboat Experience, brought to you by Refinement Not Retirement, our podcast, which I co-present with my wife and life partner, Christine. Hello, Chris. Hi, good afternoon. So um, what we're going to talk, well, we, 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 where have we got to so far in our Narrowboat Experience story? Good We've question. Talking, yeah, it is a good question. I'm going to see if I can get set this up properly. We are continuing our story of our one year experience of buying and owning a canal boat called Tickety Boo on the beautiful English historic canal network. So what does this have to do with retirement or refinement? Uh, you may well ask. Uh, we set this up by saying that not all refinements mean meaning improvements that you make or try to make to your life are ten, turn out to be actual refinements and this was one such a, example although i would say uh, that the decision to sell tickety boo did turn out to be a big refinement which we'll come to, <laughs> which we'll come to so there's a bit of an irony going on there so in the last episode we talked about the process of buying tickety boo and that it wasn't all shall we say a bed of roses what about uh, plain sailing yeah or plain it's sailing. not really sailing is it but yeah <laughs> that's a bit closer to being on a boat uh we talked about the kind of weird attitude that we got from the uh brokerage that we bought the boat from a very big well-known uh brokerage uh they uh took umbrage uh, at the fact that we wanted uh, some clarity on what the seller would or wouldn't do on the issues that arose from our expensive boat survey. Uh, but that all sort of turned out okay, except that we hadn't realised just how much umbrage they had taken until well into our story. Uh, we're not going to... There's a particularly... Um, we had a particularly poor experience, which we're not going to get into in this episode. In this episode, we, we really want to talk about how we came to the decision, uh, having been so excited about uh, the purchase of Tickety Boo, we wanted to uh, share with you how we came to the decision to do a 180 degree turn and sell her. Uh, so you may remember from the last episode that we had... Uh, collected the boat but that wasn't in, in entirely a pleasant experience either due to the bro brokerage uh, but we did have a fantastic time i mean this was really the best bits of our boat ownership what what are your for thoughts about that chris what do you remember about that first voyage and how you were feeling at that time uh, I, I remember feeling very excited i mean we just did love her didn't we and when i look back at the pictures i still go oh god she was so lovely um, and we'd stocked her out really well. I've got bought nice new bedding and matching, um, you know, quilt covers and sheets. And we'd bought lots of china and glasses. And I think the oven and the microwave had never been used before. So it was, you know, four four um, gas hob ring, which was which was nice. It was a lovely little fitted kitchen, beautiful dining table to sit as you said before I think with the open windows that we could open and look at the swans and the ducks and, and the animals going by and in the fields and and I think it was it was lovely we were very excited because it was um a, a part of uh you know we bought the house we loved the house and this was our next little venture of um picking her up and uh you know, it was we were free. COVID was um, we'd been released, if you like, from COVID. So it was uh, it was all just uh, just it just looked. We couldn't see any any reason to ever feel like the way we feel today. But um, it was uh, I think the first you know the first night we were tootling along. We've got we've planned our route. Um, we you know we 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 sort of had ideas of where we wanted to, 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 to moor up in the evenings um, in a quiet area um, and, uh, you know, look, look for, um, you know, a nice pub. In fact, I think the first night we sort of moored up was <laughs> quite 
funny, we, we went to, to what we thought was an Indian restaurant in this funny little place, and it turned out that it wasn't open on that night. It might have been a Monday, I'm not sure. Anyway, we found some pub and uh, moored up and, uh, uh, you know, had a burger and think, well, I thought, well, this is nice. We walked back and then found the boat floating halfway yeah, across the her, canal. Quite we hadn't moored her properly. properly but anyway, we took it in our stride and, uh, yeah, it, it was, um, yeah, and we'd got, you know, plenty of wine on board. Um, well, that was although, good. sort of, yeah, that yeah, that was the good bit. Um <laughs> But uh, we, we had and, lovely we, two things. I mean, we had lovely weather. Yeah, we did. And yeah. we were still the, the, it was still quite weird in terms of COVID because, you know, if you remember, the pubs were you know, very much into social distancing, masks when you stood up, that sort of thing. Yes, that's that true. Was still yes, going yes. On. Um, yeah. And, but also, I think it meant that the, the canals weren't necessarily as busy as they might well, they, they no, were, that's a good point. I don't normal, think they were. We didn't see many part. people around, did we at all? No. Um, I think I think it was, uh, um, you know, when uh, the realization maybe sort of started hit, you know, kicking in. I, mean, I think probably on the third night when we realized these cassette toilets that you have have to be emptied, and that started preying on my mind very quickly. Yeah, because you were, you were, I was in charge of the helm and you were in charge of the toilet. Yeah, right. Thanks. Like that a was fair a good deal. one. <laughs> so the consciousness, the consciousness kicked in and I suddenly started thinking, oh God, oh God, oh, you know, we had to start thinking, planning of a way, because we only had one. And I know note from a lot of other people, my cousin included, had about, you know, he'd been living on a narrow boat, had about four or five cassettes. I'm thinking, why do you need four or five cassettes? Now I realise why, because at least if you fill one up and you're not anywhere near a place to, you know, to <laughs> to, to, to dispose of it or empty it, um, you're a bit stuck. So that suddenly kicked in very quickly, the realisation yeah, the of, of the what toilets. was happening was terrible. I think it's true to say, if you look at narrow boat forums that toilets are a very big subject yeah they and are we of course if you remember we we had originally wanted to have a buy a narrow boat with a holding tank um which would have meant that the boat would have gone probably a week maybe two uh, yeah without, like holiday boats needing to things. be pumped yes. out but you'd have to go to a, a boat yard to have it pumped and pay to have it pumped out it's not a huge amount of money probably 15 20 pounds to do that uh, but this boat came with a cassette, which is a, really, I suppose, a very small version of a holding tank. Uh, the, but it's portable, and you 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 know you wheel it along the canal path in order to empty it at a normally a very disgusting place uh, because they're not very pleasant these places, as, as you well know. Um, well, and of course, the cassettes don't smell because they have a you know a, no, a you no, know they don't. it's not that at all, and the toilets that you know the, our bathroom was fabulous. Hmm. But it's the it's the emptying of it that becomes the yeah the toilet was uh, great. The toilet was great but it they do fill up very quickly and I'm not to be crude but we're both vegans and uh, the, <laughs> yes the, the vegan diet has a huge amount of fiber in it which is very healthy but it also means that it makes your body work yeah uh, very well uh, um, so you know it probably a vegan's cassette is filled up. You know, yeah, well, it was all right for we weeing because, especially you, you could just, you know, go over the, you know, the yeah. edge of the boat at night in the dark. But it wasn't quite so pleasant for me, really, having to sort of crouch down on the side of the. No, but I, you know, <laughs> I, it it took on such an importance in our in our narrowboat ownership history that yeah, we, it did. We, we, we did very a lot quickly. Of, we did a lot of research um, on it, and in fact, uh, we were we got very close to actually having an incinerating toilet installed. Uh, which which actually burns the contents, uh, the the waste, you know, reduces it to sort of a, a, a few bits of ash, like the contents of an ashtray, which yeah, is it takes a lot of power though, doesn't it? That but unfortunately, yeah. I mean, at first I thought it could be uh, powered off the leisure batteries, but no way. the The amount of power it uses is is phenomenal, and so a gas one would have been the only way forward. But we were talking, you know, when I looked into, it, we were talking about Thousands. sort of five grand. Which actually we probably would have paid, but the problem with it was that it's a bit of kit that you can't really easily get, you know, looked after. 
Nobody no. really knows how to do it in the UK. You have to buy them. I think from memory, it was someone like it was a Scandinavian company. I think did it. You know, and yes. uh, uh, just getting someone to install it was would would have been very difficult. We looked at composting toilets, um, but then a sort of huge uh, furor in the canal world world opened up when the company that the River and Canal Trust used to empty their waste uh, facilities. Uh, suddenly uh, said that people were putting tons of these, you know, contents of compost toilets just simply in the rubbish. That's in not girl, composting, yes. is it? That just isn't composting. No. And they said, well, we're not going to we're not going to dispose of human waste. I mean, totally understandably. And of course, the River and Canal Trust had to put up a put out a notice saying, you know, you can't do that. You can't put your waste in in the ordinary refuse. But of course, this by this time, loads and loads of people have gone and installed compost toilets on their narrowboat. So I don't know where, you know, now that we're out of the narrowboat business, as it were. were we, oh, uh, yes, what's that, happening uh, on that? I don't know where that has but, gone. Yes. But, um, but going back to that first, you know, as you said, the realisation kicking in was really the first time we, we needed to empty it. We pulled up, I can't even remember where it was now, we pulled up at a, a water and... Uh, waste you know station one of the river and, and canal trust facilities yes uh, and that was yeah. another thing if you remember that we hadn't actually bought the right one we we needed a hose pipe to fill up with water and we didn't have the right attachment well there was a boat in front of us who was filling up with water and also um who were very nice and i remember her saying oh you know, I'll let you, you know, you can use our hose to attach it because we needed water. We needed to fill up the tank. Um, and uh, and she told me where the, the waste uh, uh, place was for, for our cassette, which um, was horrific. I mean, as soon as it was an above ground one with a big opening uh hatch i remember two and the minute you opened it the smell yeah was, and, and uh, yeah oh, and oh the just flies and just oh awful. my god yeah, just awful. it was horrific and so she gave me a little tip which uh i did follow was this she said what you need is a little jar of vic and and with your mask on because of course we had to wear masks still anyway Put some of that Vic under your nose, like they, they're like the police force do when they're uh, looking at morgue. bodies. Yeah, yeah, morgue, yeah, morgue, um, and that will take away the smell. But I was, you know, first trip, I was already an anxious so bunny. I want to speed like. this. I want to speed this on a bit because I want to get to the reasons why we decided to. So I, I just want to sort of summarise that we had a fantastic few days, nearly a week. On that maiden voyage, we met some great people, very helpful people, you know, other narrowboat owners um, on that trip. We had great weather. We enjoyed ourselves in terms of operating the boat. I was on the helm. You know, I, I've sort of held, I've been sort of captain of boats all my life, one way or another. I've done lots of narrowboating before. Never owned one, but I've done lots of narrowboating before. I did that bit. You were a bit nervous about um, steering her. Uh, so you did dealt with the locks, um, which meant you had really the hard work to do. But yeah, we had but I enjoyed time. it. I, I enjoyed know you that. enjoyed it, and we had a great time. We ate on tickety boo quite a lot, and and what well, we, you know, one of the things that we did find uh, was that whereas we had visions from part, years past, decades past, of going to lovely pubs and uh, eating out every night, that wasn't really possible. Uh, you know, the, what we found was that there had been a huge deterioration in the pub facilities along canals. I mean, probably they've had a very tough time. Or, a lot of them closed. A lot of them closed. A lot of them were closed. And of course, yeah. being being vegan, we have a, you know, we're not, you know, the easiest customers necessarily for pubs. So uh, in those days, they weren't particularly catering. So we were beginning to, we were beginning to find some negatives, even though we did love the boat, the boat, the boat itself, herself was fantastic. You know, we'll, we'll be posting some pictures of, of her on our Facebook site, site page for this podcast when we get around to that, but you'll see her for yourself, but she, she is a lovely, lovely, lovely craft, but the aspects of the canal. See, I remember doing a piece to camera uh very shortly after we started taking that trip and i talked about how i had always loved 
the history of the canal system. And here I was now owning a narrowboat and, you know, I was getting up early in the morning doing that walk um, before breakfast on board. And it was just lovely to, because really a lot of the canal system is very much like it's been since the 1700s, really, once yeah. you're away from the urban setting, it's still very much the same. And, you know, I always thought about the, the boat, the original boaters and how they families lived on the narrowboats and, and applied their trade that way it was i just loved that history and still do still do but uh when it came to actually spending days and nights and evenings uh trying to find things to do in a steel tube moored up against very often a muddy muddy narrowboat um pitch black no 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 street no, lighting of course in the middle shall of we nowhere say the, yeah shall we say the shine was where you know started to wear off even i think at that on that first trip a little <laughs> bit a did. little bit even then it was we were beginning to face up to the realities of life yes. on board um and you know well we'll talk a little bit more about that but uh anyway the other end of that trip we arrived and i think even even on that first trip we were sort of quite quite speeding along to get to end this sort of discomfort of being on a narrow boat uh, and we you know we were so we arrived i think at our new marina um earlier perhaps a, a day or so earlier than we had uh, intended originally intended but we anyway we had a great reception from that marina they they gave us a bottle of prosecco you you might remember um yeah and, oh and um, we'd booked a, we'd booked an indian restaurant in the yeah. little town yeah, we'd, in the, gone, in... we'd gone for dinner and we were so proud to tell them, weren't we, that we'd we'd be yeah. coming there often because they were, you know. Because we now convenient. had a narrow boat and we were mooring it locally. Yeah, a little village, uh, with a little village Indian restaurant. Very nice, very nice people. And uh, we had a really wonderful meal there. You're quite right. Yeah, we had the, yeah, we had the champagne and then we, or the, you know, the bubblies and then went out for dinner and then, because then we left the next day. Didn't yeah, we, we, we stayed, stayed on, we stayed on the board. marina. I remember how weird it was driving a car after those days on the boat and, you know, just to go to the Indian restaurant. We had a nice meal. Yes. Uh, and that was all fantastic. Um, and then, of course, we, we, we went home. Uh, and, but, you know, I'm going to fast forward now um to the time when we actually made the decision so we we, we used the narrow we used tickety boo quite infrequently because you know we are fair weather narrow boaters and uh, we like we don't really like being on a narrow boat when it's pouring with rain so we we wanted to choose our times of, of going on her uh, carefully um so we 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 did a few day trips on her I think we did uh, one other sort of few days trip on her. I can't remember when that was. Yeah, I think it was my birthday. I think for your birthday, so we did we did that. Um, and you know, I, I, again, I think that we we were getting a bit more used to the discomforts. Not getting used to them—that's the wrong word. We 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 were finding out more about the discomforting parts of of, of being on a narrowboat. I think even one as lovely as Tickety Boo. Yeah, but I didn't want to go for more than two or three days. Yeah, which I is remember why on the you, whole we, Yeah, I, I remember said that's you, enough for me. Yeah, so we did day trips and we did you know a couple of trips of a, of a few days, but we it was becoming you know sort of apparent that we weren't going to be using her that much. Can I just jump in as well? I know we haven't mentioned the kids, but of course you know. Yes. We we also talk you know our four daughters who had all been brought up on narrow boating holidays we're all very keen to come and join us on her and uh you know we talked about it a lot but with their busy lives um the, the, we weren't ever to able to find time i don't think one of them ever saw her um right. uh, sadly but it's just that not because they didn't want to but because just the way life sort of panned out and their busyness and our busyness and having got the new house um th that never happened and that started to weigh heavily on us because we thought well when we can go out on the boat we want to be seeing the kids and then yeah so that that's how that evolved as well yes so uh we we of course uh, perhaps we, we wanted to keep tickety boo very very well and keep her very well maintained so we had booked her into a boatyard to have her blacked um 
uh, her hull blacked and had various other things. We renewed her leisure. Well, we renewed all her batteries um, on board. And that we are, I'm not going to talk about that particular experience in this episode, as I said, because we had a very, very bad experience with the boatyard, uh, which we will tell you about uh, in the in the fourth and final um part of uh, our narrowboat experience but i'm going to fast forward here to the 29th of may in 21 which was after the boat had had had, had been blacked and we'd had a new cover made for her tailor made for her um she was she was in great condition um uh when we went back to see her for our for our for our what turned out to be our final really our final trip on her final proper trip on her um and you were absolutely shocked because we went for my my birthday and we went to the yes. ashby canal we 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 decided to go on the ashby canal which is actually a lockless canal we had a you know quite a journey to get there but the actual ashby canal is is one that is talked about a lot as being a very attractive rural canal with no locks um but we came to the i i sort of turned to you one evening i think it was <clears throat> and said i think you know i'm thinking that we should sell tickety boo and i think you were i mean i think you're you're you 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 had you didn't see that coming at all did you i didn't i i was completely shocked because i mean i knew you loved her and i knew you know and, and you know it was your passion and uh, can you remember my reaction uh, no, you'll have to remind me. My reaction was, I think, was probably shocked you even more than my, your telling me was, okay then. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> because I had, because I had secretly, uh, although as I said, I love you, though I loved her. I, I found it. Now we were in our dream home. I found it really quite a chore packing up. Every, you know, whenever we were going, day trips were absolutely fine. It was an hour there, an hour back, and I just. I like well. I would never have said anything to you. Never in a million trillion years. And you hid I it. I mean, you hid your. You loved you hid, her so yeah. well. I just, you know, grinned and bared it. And you were amazing. I, you, you hid I your went, displeasure from me completely. I, I wasn't, <laughs> um, you know, I, I hadn't realised that you were. Oh, you know, this was probably the best news that you could ever receive. Yeah, no, 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 I don't think I. You, you said you sure? Oh, you meant? Oh, you sure you don't want to think about it? I went. No, that's fine. That's good. Let's do it. And there was no hesitation. From me because the, the surprise was so great and my reaction i think was so fast we <laughs> actually that day had had a terrible lunch in a pub it was absolutely terrible um oh god was that that I fried think it was, fried I, burger yes, or something yes it oh, was just god. awful i mean everything about the pub was awful oh, it was um disgusting. and I, you know i'm not actually looking at the extract right now from my journal on that day <laughs> and, and i've i've written the balance had been tipped, this is about talking about the decision, by our lunch experience today. But the decision was the result of a long process of deliberation. And by that, I mean my deliberation. And I turned to you and I said, quote, Kiki, I think we should sell Tickety Boo. And instantly I wrote in my journal, instantly I could see the relief on Kiki's face. Uh, that's Christine's nickname, by the way, Kiki. She had... Uh, been going along with my passion for narrowboating but she wasn't enjoying the camping aspects of it sleeping and toilet arrangements being the main ones especially since we now have a such a lovely home in the Cotswold so and then I bullet bullet I, in my journal I bullet pointed the things that really I think were the main points and you can comment on these Chris and add to them if you want to but the I had bullet pointed them in this this in this way. There are very few facilities uh, on the canal system, and the basic amenities are horrible. <laughs> For example, sanitization stations, WCs, showers, rubbish disposal points. Um, so that was my first thing. Uh, my second bullet point was the beauty of the canal scape, which of course I've talked about earlier in this episode. Um, frequ were frequently interrupted by ugly ghettos uh, and boats, usually uh, people who've chosen to live on the canals uh, because they can't afford perhaps, or it's a cheaper way of living than having to pay council tax and stuff like that. 
and I by no means want to cast aspersions on liver boards generally, but there are some, you know, that you do go through these areas where they literally, they're so ugly, you know, they're piled with rubbish and, you know, old bicycles and, you know, just all kinds of... Well, and animals stuff. and ferrets and you know, dogs. Yes, yeah, all, all this stuff. Oh, and and the, the boats are like, look on, look as though they're on the point of sinking a lot of the time. They're, they're, they're not maintained properly and they look really, really ugly. Um, and these punctuate the otherwise gorgeous canal scapes that you go through, which I did love. But then we were beginning to see things like, you know, just rubbish, just dumped, weren't we? The people were getting oh, floating know, along the rubbish canals. and just throwing it in the canal, throwing it in the hedgerow. Um, uh, it was really, really ugly. Yes. Uh, my next bullet point were many of the pubs are awful. You know, I'd been used to the, in the olden days, lovely pubs. Um, and, you know, I've also boated in France, uh, fat gone on family uh, boating holidays in France, where you anywhere you're at, uh, you know, you can you can find a nice, you know, f French restaurant, obviously French because uh, you're in France. Uh, you can find those anywhere. Not so in in the near the canals in the UK. It's it's it, you know, I'm not saying there are no nice restaurants. There are, but you know, it's not as though you can get in a car because you're going at four miles an hour. No, sometimes you have to walk a long way, don't you? So you know, there's that aspect of it. Another thing: muddy towpaths. You know, really muddy towpaths. So you, you've got often often strewn with dog poo, uh, and then you're getting back on your boat, and you know, you're home for a few days or a week or so, and Filthy, you know, you're yeah. you're walking into the boat. That's that's a horrible thing. Um, uh, and you know, <laughs> the other thing is that even the great aspects of the boating that we enjoyed, that you talked about, you know, going through the locks and you know, helming the beautiful the boat, wildlife, beautiful, all that, all, all, all that, all that's beautiful. But bottom line, it gets a bit boring. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you you're you know what are you going to do? You you're stuck. You're on the in the cockpit, all out on the which is lovely being outside. But you I mean you know going on and on and on at four miles an hour, it gets a bit boring. It really you know it's okay for a few hours, but not day in day out. And when yeah, the, seven we hours a day. on earlier, when the weather is 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 bad, um, it really is quite unpleasant, isn't it? Yeah, uh, you don't really want to be standing out on the on the back of the you know on the cot in the cockpit or on the back of the, the narrowboat in pouring weather and you don't really want to be going through locks where you know they get the sides get slippery and it can get quite dangerous uh so in the round we just realized it wasn't for us we thought it was for us we had found a beautiful boat we still love her even though she's no longer ours um we love the memories you know we'll share the photographs with you but uh in the round it was this was definitely the right decision for us don't you think chris yeah absolutely 100 percent. anything to add to any of those points no i don't think so no i i think you've um we had a lovely sitting area pointed. on the boat didn't we with those two sort of um, faux leather chairs that that face the yes uh, it was lovely the, and we've the, got some lovely stove. pictures of you sitting there with your captain's hat um, on but you said the but it can't... you know i think yeah, but like, I tell you another thing that because we were having to to go anywhere, we had to get up in the morning and get going really quickly, you know, to get seven, eight hours of day, you know, in during the daylight because you couldn't travel at night. And so it would mean not getting one's ablutions done, cleaning the teeth, you know, having a shower. Um, and then, you know, it was... It, it, you know, you'd have to plan it when you stopped. And, and like, if you suddenly needed to go for a you know, for a wee, um, it was, I, I was scared to helm the boat. So I was sort of like, well, hurry up, quickly go. Or, you know, you could go so slow, you could jump off and have a quick wee and get back on. But even, you know, it was, you couldn't, you had to pace yourself in a way that it was, you know, for you, non-stop, seven, seven or eight hours at the helm to get anywhere. If you think about it in four miles an hour, um yeah. It, it, you, you couldn't get anywhere really so if you we'd have a point didn't we we'd have it said we could say how many days we wanted to be out when we wanted to be back um how you know how many locks to go through it calculated it and it tells you where you turn around 
Um, but to, to keep that pace up, that was quite a struggle, even sure. that. Sure. But, um, of course, we have deliberately avoided uh, the very ugly experience that we had, which we'll be sharing with you, dear listener, next time. And so a lot of these things that we've mentioned might seem, you know, sort of a little bit um, uh, insignificant to a lot of people. And I understand that perhaps we are a bit precious in, in, in wanting chocolates on our pillows in the evening and that sort of thing. But uh, the, that we did have a very, very bad experience. And we will, as I say, share that with you. And perhaps you, you, you're, you know, that definitely factored into our uh, decision to sell her uh, so there it is we're running out of time and uh, those are our, those are our reasons uh, we would we would as always love to hear your thoughts on any of this um, if this will help I hope people who are thinking about possibly uh, buying a narrow boat they have become very popular uh, uh and a lot of people i know have been considering it we've met people locally in the cotswolds who have um, purchased a narrowboat in the same way that we did at, at the same time as moving out of a city um uh, but if you are in, in, having that contemplation hopefully some of the things that we've mentioned will make you uh perhaps have pause for thought uh but you may you may have had a completely different experience you may absolutely love it i know a lot of people do uh and uh you know we're all different and uh, we would love to hear those opinions as well uh but uh that's how we arrived at our decision and uh next time we will be telling you about our dark experience uh with a boatyard um and uh you know you'll i think understand why it left a very very sour taste in our mouths uh but we hope to see you next time in part four of the narrowboat experience and after that we will be getting on to a lot of other subjects as we continue uh with our podcast podcast on refinement not retirement but for now it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from me bye everyone see you next bye, time everybody.